Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on this YouTube channel and we have been talking about sex and singleness, God's design for sex was last week and the biblical design for sex and how uh, it is to be celebrated, cherished and rejoiced over and this week we're looking at the practical side of things so let's get right to it so after last week's episode you may just have been thinking let's be practical no one actually lives like that no one actually manages not to have sex before marriage and the truth is that many people do it's just that most often they're not the kind of people that Hollywood makes movies about or that have the most drama in their life so most likely you won't hear about it but they most definitely do people manage to do it all the time so this video is just going to be about basically what are some practical things we can think about in terms of what uh, following God's biblical model for sex looks like so the first question that I think it's good to ask oneself is what am I filling my mind with? Most movies nowadays have a huge amount of sex in them pretty much left, right and center. And not only that, but you just need to walk out of your house to get ads and billboards and everything, magazines, pretty much all of that has lots and lots of sex, nudity, all of that. And my point is that you don't even have to go looking for sex. It is pretty much in your face in our everyday lives. But here's a different thing. When we voluntarily bring that into our house through the things that we watch, the things that we fill our minds with, we don't have to watch all these movies or we don't have to watch all the bits in the movies that you know are just going to cause you to think a lot about sex and make you think how unattainable this lifestyle is, well, that is probably going to happen. If you spend your evenings watching movies that are full of sexual scenes in them, well, you're just going to start to think about sex a lot. That's just kind of the way it is. In Philippians 4.9, Paul talks about thinking about whatever is pure, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is praiseworthy or admirable, that one should think on these things. So it's a good thing to ask oneself when we're watching a movie that is full of sex, is this the best thing that I could be thinking about right now, given that I'm wanting to live um, a life according to God's intention? Number two is who are you accountable to? And I think this is probably one of the most important points. Um, you really need at least one person in your life that you can be vulnerable with, you can share with. That person can really ask you tough questions about what your life is like, what your actions were, what your thought life is like. Someone that you give complete access to your life and say, ask me about anything if you think there's something that's not right in what I say versus what I do. This is someone that you can be vulnerable with, someone you can be super upfront with and say, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I need for you to pray with me on. This is what I really find hard in my walk. If you don't have one of these people in your life, I urge you to pray for one. Ask God to bring someone into your life who will hold you accountable, but not out of judgment, but who will be someone who loves you enough to ask you difficult questions, who sees stuff in your life that isn't quite as it should be and loves you enough not to mince their words, but to tell you the truth in love. What I find is that when you don't have anyone that you can be completely vulnerable with, completely open with, you start to make excuses really quickly for your own behavior. That is a given because there's no one there to keep you in check and to say, actually, I don't think that's really what God says about this, that, or the other. Or I don't think that the way you're thinking right now is in line with what's helpful or fruitful for you, given that you've set these goals and targets. 
In the meantime, waiting for God to bring that kind of person into your life is to speak to your pastor or to your pastor's spouse, someone of the same sex that you can really speak to with no limits and no reservations. Proverbs 18, 24 talks about a man who has many companions coming to ruin, but there being a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong if that person actually is your sibling, your brother or your sister, all the better. Number three is that God will help you. And sometimes it seems weird to talk about God in the context of sexual desires and coming to him. Uh, but the truth is that he sees everything and he created sex so it's not like he's sitting there thinking it's kind of weird that you should be having these sexual desires he knows he created you he created sex and there's really nothing that's gonna make him blush so go ahead and make him your first point of contact before your uh, person that you're accountable to your close friend make him the first point of contact Tell him about the things that you're genuinely struggle, struggling with and watch him lead you in ways that you didn't think possible. Just remember that there are no taboos with God. He is not surprised by anything that you feel. So those are the three points. Number one is what are you filling your mind with? Are those things unhelpful if you are trying to keep a life that is in line with the God's plan for sex. Number two is who are you accountable to? Do you have someone in your life that you can be completely vulnerable and open with and who will love you and encourage you and exhort you and just spur you on to living a godly life? And number three is that God will help you. He is in no way intimidated by anything you will say to him and that includes sex so those are the three points for this week and i hope they're helpful in some way to someone somewhere thank you for watching and next week there is going to be a part three of sex and singleness clearly because well sex is a big deal so we're gonna be looking more into what happens when my past looks like this and how do i navigate that and what do i do with all those things that really now I can't do anything about. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week. Have a great week.